In this video, we will talk about planar motions. An extension to spatial motion is straightforward, but we will not be discussing them. So we'll start with something very simple, what we call a translation or a translation in motion. So what's a translation? So let's say I have an object and this object is moving along some flat surface. If during the movement, the object does not change its orientation. Change in orientation is defined by the fact that if you pick any line, if you pick any line in this object, whether it's this line or whether it's this line or whether it's uh, uh, this line or whether it's uh, this line, you pick any line on this object, that line should not change its orientation. So the red line was vertical, it is still vertical. Somewhere in between position, you know, this is where the object is, you know, this is the red line. It's not changing its orientation. This is my blue line, it's not changing orientation, it's always horizontal. It is my uh, uh, more funky looking line, it's not changing its orientation. So none of these lines are changing its orientation and that means it's a translation. Now in this particular case, this is what we call a straight line or a rectilinear translation. Rectilinear translation. And it's defined by the fact that there is no change in orientation. Now keep in mind that just as you have rectilinear translation, so the rectilinear basically comes for the word rect, which means a straight and linear is line. So it's a straight line motion. So this is a straight line motion. You can also have non-rectilinear translation, which surprisingly, well not surprisingly, are called curvilinear translation or translation along a curve. So for example, if I have the same object and it moves like this. So if this is the center of mass, and if you track the path of the center of mass, it may look like this. So in this case also, we have a translation. It is a translation because the orientation of this object is not changing. In other words, it's not rotating. So if this is my vertical line, this is still vertical, this is still vertical, this is still vertical, and so on. Okay, this is what we call a curvilinear translation. Curvilinear translation. This is a translation along a curved path. So just because something is moving along a curved path doesn't mean that it's necessarily going to be changing its orientation. However, along the same path, if let's say its orientation was changing, so let's say I do the same path, okay, and I'm going to just draw that path that looks like it. And along this path, if my object was changing its orientation, so let's say it was moving like this. And this is my initial red line and now this is the orientation, this is the orientation, this is the orientation. And you can clearly see that this red line is constantly changing its orientation along this path. Even though the center of mass is following the same trajectory, uh, you can clearly see that this is not a translation by definition because there is change in orientation. So I should say not a translation. This is not a translation. The second simplest kind of uh, motion that we have is what we call pure rotation. So pure rotation. So pure rotation is basically rotation where there is no translation involved. So for example, if I take a beam and I hinge it at one point, so this is my pin joint, that's this and minus 0. 0.4, okay. As this rotates, either in clockwise or counterclockwise direction, every point on this beam is going to be tracing circular path with O as the center. So this is one path, this is the other path, this is the third path, and so on. Okay, so these paths are all parallel to each other. They're all circular paths and they're all parallel to each other. This is what we call a pure rotation. There's no translation involved over here, okay? Because there is a fixed point. So pure rotation is basically rotation about a fixed point. So if you can find a fixed point which does not move on the object or outside the object, then that's a rotation about a fixed point. A third kind of motion is what we call a general planar motion. So as the name implies, the general planar motion combines translation with rotation. So that's translation 
plus rotation. So clearly this is not a general planar motion. Fluid translation is also not a general planar motion. When you combine translation with the rotation, you get a general planar motion. So if you are thinking that this is general planar motion, then you'd be right. Yes, that is an example of a general planar motion. Now, let me give another example. Let's say I have a wheel and this wheel is rolling on a flat surface. Okay, it's rolling on a flat surface. So which means that it will be rotating. Okay, so if you look at the, let's say this is an it's initial orientation of a line. Then after a while, when the wheel has moved here, let me call this O and let's call this point A. Then point O is here and the point A will have moved from here to let's say here A prime, right? So clearly the line OA has changed its orientation on, from vertical to something which is at an angle from vertical or horizontal, right? So in this case, you can see that uh, there is a change in orientation, which means that there is a rotation involved here. But at the same time, there is translation as well because there is no fixed point. So the point O itself has certain velocity. So this is a case of a general planar motion.